Hi, I'm Dylan, and this is Not Exactly Normal. I watch the entire Star Wars franchise probably about once every two years, and every time I watch the prequels, I have the same reaction that many have. Why oh why did they use so much CGI? Computer generated imagery. And then, very recently, I stumbled across a forum on theforce.net which really opened my eyes to the surprising practical effects in the Star Wars prequels. There is a lot more real imagery in those movies than I, and I think many people give them credit for. To be clear, there is a lot of CGI in these movies, and a lot of bad CGI, especially the CGI characters. But hey, it was the late 90s and early 2000s. Look at the competition. I find this especially interesting in the context of the new films, of which people make a big deal about them being highly practical, even though they do, in fact, use a lot of CGI. Obviously. A lot of people think of this image when they think of the prequels versus the originals, which isn't exactly true, especially since they did use a fair amount of blue screen in the original trilogy. For starters, they built more physical models for just episode 3 than they did for the entire original trilogy. The first big thing that I didn't realize was not entirely computer generated was a lot of the sets. Let's look at the execution arena in Attack of the Clones. Totally thought this was an entirely digital creation. And it's not. The arena was, like many of the sets, painstakingly carved out of foam and shot on as a miniature. Characters and effects were then composited on top, using green screen or fully digital models, in the case of many of the droids. So all of these elements were brought together in a digital world, but a lot of the source materials actually analog. The pod racing scene was also a miniature. They even loaded it up with different colored Q-tips and wiggled them around to make them look like a crowd at a distance. And even close up, it looks pretty good. The actual pod race was mostly CGI, but they actually built many of the pod racers and even shot with them on the hangar set. Kashyyyk, which I thought was very fake, is actually a lot of miniatures. All the trees are just one tree they built out of foam, which was about 12 feet tall, that they could reconfigure into different positions. I also thought that all the Wookiees were fake, but many of them were real and they just duplicated the image across the screen. For me, the most impressive miniature they built was the set of Mustafar, which is the largest mini they built for episode 3, coming in at 50 feet wide and 30 feet deep, and it even had real functioning lava, or rather a special orange goopy fluid. But still cool. While they were in production on Revenge of the Sith, Mount Edna in Italy erupted, and the crew was able to capture footage of it, which they ended up using a lot of in the background shots on Mustafar. To me, the most surprising use of practical effects in the prequels was Kamino. I always thought Kamino looked so fake. So fake. But it turns out that a lot of it is actually miniatures. A lot of it was purely digital, but the hallway scenes were actually miniatures with actors composited on. Jango's apartments and the landing pad that Obi-Wan arrives on and later fights Jango on are actually both full-scale physical sets. Another one that I thought was entirely 100% made in a computer was Coruscant. I mean, how could it not be? It looks so clean and crisp and digital and fake, but it's not. Well, not entirely. They actually created Coruscant using a combination of things from miniatures to matte paintings to partial sets, and of course, computer-generated images. They would have done the whole thing in the computer, but the technology wasn't there at the time, and actually building physical sets and miniatures was a lot faster than building the entire thing in the computer. Utapau was probably the most digital world, though it did have a handful of real parts. The sinkholes that make up the cities on the planet were all miniatures, and then one of the closer-up walls of the city was also a miniature. A lot of Moss Eisley was created using set extensions, miniatures, and green screen. And Naboo, when it wasn't Spain or Italy, was actually a gigantic, beautiful miniature set. They also used a lot of full-sized real sets. The Jedi chambers were real, which I could have totally sworn were fake. Palpatine's office and Padme's apartment are both real, using matte paintings for the background of Coruscant. The opening duel with Dooku in Episode 3 was on a set, much like the set at the end of Return of the Jedi, as was the club at the start of Episode 2, which was only in existence for less than a day before they finished shooting and had to tear down. I think that a lot of the criticism that these films received stemmed from the art direction, driven from the setting, to mean that the originals were gritty looking, and it was cool to see the future as not shiny. So when you saw these shiny, sleek-looking Naboo starfighters, it was a bit disappointing. And while you can certainly disagree with the art direction, they did actually build full-size Naboo starfighters, which they used in the hangar scenes on Naboo. Also, all the Naboo starfighters that explode in the space battle above Naboo were real explosions. They just blew up all the miniatures. Speaking of which, the Jedi cruiser off the top of Episode 1 was a real miniature, though it was about 8 feet long. And when it explodes, it was a real explosion. 
I imagine it must be heartbreaking for the dozens of artists that worked on these ships only to see them exploded on camera. Many of the Jedi Starfighters in Revenge of the Sith were real. They built scale models as well as miniatures for various scenes. Oh, and just because I saw this and now I can never unsee it, but R2-D2 being in a Starfighter was a late addition to the model and they didn't have enough time to figure out how to properly fit him into the ship. So while it looks like he fits, his legs would actually hang out of the bottom. Sorry. They also built scale models for the speeder chase off the top of episode two. Though other than that, that scene is entirely digital including Anakin and Obi-Wan sometimes. The chrome Nubian ship was also a miniature, which ILM actually shot on their rooftop using the sky of LA as the background. Though for the shots of them leaving the ship, it was actually just a ramp and some blue screen in Tunisia. Surprisingly, the droid deploying tanks and the hangar they deployed from in episode one were real miniatures in many shots. And all the shots of them exploding or crashing were actual miniatures being destroyed. Probably one of the most surprising practical effects in the entire franchise was the Sebulba crash in Episode 1. That was entirely a mini crashing and not a digital creation. They catapulted the mini into the scene where it bounced off a small piece of wood and skidded to a stop. Not only that, but the pit droid that gets sucked into the pod racer was also a practical effect. The tri-bubble underwater speeder from episode one was also real, which is probably why it looks so good when it emerges from the river and feet. Interestingly enough, they would shoot a lot of these miniatures outdoors because the sunlight made them look the most real. So many of these sets were built on wheels so they could move and rotate the sets towards the sun so they could shoot all day with the same looking light. The CGI in the Star Wars prequels was primarily used for compositing and for characters. So there's very few puppets in them. The Phantom Menace had a total of two. Yoda was actually puppeted in this one, even though he does look rather different from the originals. And the pod racer Doug Bolt was also a puppet, which is why he looks fantastic. You probably know this, but every single clone trooper was a digital creation, which was a bit of a weird choice. It makes sense in those big wide shots when you can see thousands of them, but in those medium shots when you can see their head and their armor together, it just doesn't look good. So I thought the same thing would be true for the battle droids, but I was wrong. Yes, there are a lot of completely digital droids, but many of the battle droids in Episode 1 are real, including the ones that Obi-Wan dices up in the hangar on Naboo. C-3PO is puppeted when he's see-through and is later Anthony Daniels wearing a costume, as from the originals, though he was fully animated in the factory scene from Episode 2. Speaking of costumes, they are absolutely amazing in these movies. Animatronics had really evolved, especially by the time the third film came out, and they were able to do some very impressive and emotive facial expressions and lip movements. The two heads of the Trade Federation wore animatronics which evolved greatly throughout the production. At first, their faces were remote controlled by guys off camera listening to the dialogue through a hidden microphone and trying to match it. And then by the third movie, they were able to computerize the mouth movements and facial expressions which synced up with pre-recorded dialogue. Tion Medin, that guy from Utapau, was done entirely in makeup and is my personal favorite looking character from all of the prequels. The Tusken Raiders were all real, as were a lot of the aliens from the bar in Attack of the Clones and the aliens in Dex's diner, and most, if not all, of the extras were just people in costumes. Ultimately, the criticism of these movies as not being great due to an overreliance on CGI is a misdirected criticism. It's pointing out one flaw in the grand scheme of storytelling to identify that as the reason those movies aren't fantastic, when really it was a lot of different things coming together to make those movies a disappointment for many. Or not, if you liked them. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. The effects were really ahead of their time, but it was a time in which those effects, albeit advanced, still didn't look great. If the storytelling had been better, no one would care about the effects. I mean, this doesn't exactly look stellar. Also, I found out in the process of watching a ton of behind the scenes documentaries in preparation for this episode that Wedge from the original Star Wars movies is Ewan McGregor's uncle, which I didn't know before, and A New Hope was the first film that Ewan saw in theaters. Anyways, what do you guys want me to talk about in my next episode? Please let me know in the comments, and if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel or support me on Patreon, it'd be much appreciated. I'm actually starting to do a Patreon-exclusive behind-the-scenes series on this series, so if you guys want to head over there, you can check that out. Thanks for watching.